Hello, this is Jellel. Um, today I want to be talking about the five platonic solids plus the other two solids that I think are very important and um, and their correlation to spiritual alchemy and crystal work. Alright, uh, first we have here is a grid that I've drawn. If I take all these crystals off here, you can see what this grid is. It is, I call it the sacred seven because this has all of the five platonic solids plus the sphere and the star tetrahedron. Alright, if you check out each one, I'm going to start with the star tetrahedron. The star tetrahedron represents light and uh, it's uh, it's basically just two tetrahedrons overlapping each other. This is probably one of the newer of the solids that has just been um, discovered and or rediscovered and uh, is used in metaphysical work now. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the tetrahedron. This one represents fire. Uh, this one is the, your standard tetrahedron. It's just like a, basically a 3D triangle. It's this little guy. Next, I want to talk about is the Earth uh, hexahedron or the cube. This guy. And this uh, this solid represents Earth. The next one I'm going to talk about is the octahedron, which is air. And yes, this represents gases or air. Uh, the next one is the water, which is the icosahedron. This one. This represents water. And next one is uh, the dodecahedron, which represents prana or ether. These are very, all, all of these solids from here, the five originals, these are Plato solids. These are the platonic solids. And uh, all five of them were considered sacred uh, many years ago in the Greek uh, mystery schools. And uh, these are basically the elements, oh I'm sorry, I forgot about one last one, the sphere is the void. Okay, but um, these solids are basically a representation of the alchemic materials of the universe. You can basically sum up any, any basic material that's in the universe in any of these seven solids. I call them the sacred seven. Other people just say there's six, some people say there's five, but from what I've gathered, um, I would like to say that there's seven. There, there, there's probably a few more that you could throw in there, but I think seven is probably the most appropriate that you can uh, use with these. So uh, this this one up here, this is a star tetrahedron. Um, this little guy is made out of uh, uh, clear or uh, a little bit of cloudy, cloudy quartz. It's like a clear quartz, but it has some white inclusions in there. Uh, if you notice though, the star tetrahedron is really interesting because at one level it's a cube that has been just shaven away on the edges and it fits perfectly into the cube if you ever make one. Uh, and then if you turn it around a little, you notice it's two tetrahedrons. This is a really interesting solid because it's kind of uh, more than one solid thrown in, the, in, the, uh, in one solid. And the next one is just the little... Uh, tetrahedron which is fire if you notice the inside of the tetrahedron forms the perfect six directions if you look inside of it you see how it makes those that perfect six directional symmetry in there then there's the cube and um, these ones are smoky quartz these these all these little guys except this the star tetrahedron which represents light this one is uh, white quartz or clear quartz um, then there's the octahedron. This is like what the basis of the pyramids in Egypt. It's like half of an octahedron are used with. This is uh, that's the solid that they used was the octahedron. Uh, the next one is the icosahedron, which is the water. But uh, this one has 20 sides. And this one's also smoky quartz. Then I have the dodecahedron, a smoky quartz version of it. And this represents ether. This one has 12 sides. It's a, uh, it's more of the, it's what represents prana or ether that runs through the universe, which most scientists still have trouble even understanding that ether is everywhere in the universe. But that is one of the most most important of the solids because it's everywhere. And uh, the last of the little guys is um, the void, which is the sphere. With all seven of them, you get a basic arrangement of the entire universe. Everything in the universe can be divided in any of these seven, of these seven solids. Uh, light, for instance, would be the star tetrahedron. You know, fire, earth, air, water, ether, and the void. Now, for you who don't know what the void is, the void would be considered uh, 
it'd be like a dimensional gate. It's going through one dimension into the into the next dimension. It's anywhere there's space between dimensions is the void. And that's what the sphere represents. And in all honesty, most objects in the universe naturally adhere to this shape, which is a sphere. Uh, uh, in the third dimension, anyway. That's just one of the main shapes of the entire universe, so I thought it's very important to include that one in the the Sacred Seven. But, anyway, I did the little uh, diagram just to show you how they all fit into the um, perfect, uh, the seven circles. The seven circles make the perfect, it's sacred geometry, and they all fit into there perfectly. That's why, to me, I, I really consider the Sacred Seven one of the most important important structures in uh, spiritual alchemy or under trying to understand the elements and understanding their relation to the universe. Well, um, that's going to be it for this little section. Uh, I'll see you next time. This is Jell-El. I'll see you later.